All right. So uh, this time uh, we will proceed with the uh, pretrial. Uh, and the plaintiff, of course, has the right to go first. And so, uh, plaintiff, uh, you may proceed. Your Honor, starting with introductions, my name is Dylan Chalabro, and I, along with my co counsel, Andrew Edge, are here on behalf of the plaintiff, Jordan Street. We are here for the wrongful death action against the defendant uh, for the death surrounding the conduct of a soccer practice on September 7, 2018, that ultimately led to the death of Jordan Street. Uh, Your Honor, the plaintiff has a few preliminary matters, housekeeping matters, and then some stipulations to take up whenever the court is ready. Might as well uh, do it, to, but to Mr. Booth, if you'd like to introduce yourself, you're welcome to. Yes, Your Honor. Good evening. My name is William Booth, and today I'm joined by my second chair, Miss Samantha DiGiuseppe, and together we represent Coach Reese Taylor, the defendant in today's case. And we have some stipulations to read on to the record and two housekeeping issues to get into before trial as well. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's let the plaintiff uh, proceed, and then I'll come back to you. In terms of housekeeping, may we have free leave of the courtroom with the understanding that we are in a virtual presentation, so just within the purview of the camera? That's fine. You can do anything you'd, you'd like as long as it's reasonable. May we assume that all sidebars will be constructed for the benefit of this trial? Yes. May I assume that all witnesses are pre-sworn? Yes. Uh, the exhibits have been pre-marked in this case file. May I use those pre-markings throughout the trial? Yes, as far as the numerical marking, those those will remain the same. All right, that's it for housekeeping. Plant now wants to go into the stipulations we've taken up with defense counsel. The court is ready. Let's go. Okay. The plaintiff and defense have both stipulated that Exhibit 15, the toxicology report, is coming in uh, without objection. Second stipulation is the note referencing buying snow, uh, that that's not gonna come in, is gonna be excluded from this trial in its entirety. Uh, further, Your Honor, both parties have stipulated that no testimony from Miss Merriweather that Rory was hanging out with the drug crowd or out smoking cigarettes during lunch, or any of that kind of testimony is gonna be excluded as well. Is that your agreement as well, Mr. Booth? Yes, Your Honor. All of those were well articulated and we stipulate to all of them. Your Honor, the, the plaintiff would like to put the court on notice to one more matter. Uh, exhibit 16, Dr. Reagan McConaughey's report. Exhibit 17, Mr. McConaughey's CV. And Exhibit 21, the weather report for Waco, Texas for September 7, 2007, 2018. have already been admitted, pre-admitted into evidence per Your Honor's pretrial order section 3C. Yes, this has the CV for the doctor. Uh, it, it's the report for Dr. McConaughey, the CV for Dr. McConaughey, and the weather report for September 7, 2018. Right. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 21 uh, were pre admitted, and 20 is a learning treatise, so it might as well be. We just want to put the court on notice that plaintiff intends to go into this testimony more likely in closing argument rather than talking about all the evidence at this time. All right. Anything further? That's it from the plaintiff, Your Honor. Defense. Your Honor, I'll start with uh, housekeeping. First, I ask that we invoke Rule 615 to constructively sequester all non-party witnesses for the duration of trial. And just so Your Honor is aware, we do intend on having Miss Reese Taylor, while she's not here with us at council table, we do intend on having her be present and watch the testimony throughout today's trial. She's a part of it. And, and furthermore, Your Honor, I ask permission to remain seated because of the online format of this jurisdiction. If I could just remain seated throughout examinations and statements. Great. And with that, Your Honor, we're ready to proceed. Opposing counsel listed the stipulations we'd agree to, and we have nothing further to add. All right. Plaintiff, uh, you may proceed with opening statement. Thank you, Your Honor. Just one moment to set up.
May it please the court. Power is neither good nor evil. It's what people do with power that really matters. And this defendant chose to abuse her power. Chose to abuse it as a youth sports coach. Chose to abuse it until the point to where a child died. Lori Street was 17 years old. She was a junior in high school. She was a star on her soccer team. Rory Street had a future. She had D1 scholarship opportunities waiting for her. And as the defendant will say, she had superhuman abilities on that field. But as it would turn out, all too human in reality. Now, soccer season in Waco, Texas usually started in late, late August through September into November. Now, as your honor knows, it can be hot in Waco during those summer months. September 7, 2018 was no exception. It was 105 degrees, as you will learn, just as the defendant wanted it. The defendant scheduled practice at 315 for one particular purpose. There was one purpose you will learn the defendant scheduled practice in the heat of the day to toughen his girls up. He thought that if they can make it through the heat of the day. They can make it through the season. The defendant did not just choose to practice his girls in the heat of the day or her girls in the heat of the day. She chose to punish them too. Now, where would the defendant choose to punish his players? Burham Road. Now, this road was notorious. Anytime a player wasn't acting up to par, wasn't playing to the coach's level of expectations was perceived as lollygagging to the coach, the coach would send him to Burham Road. And there, the defendant would make people sprint for 30 yards, dribble for 30 yards, and try to shoot. Then bear crawl 60 yards back in the triple-digit heat on their hands and feet. And at any point during that drill, someone messed up, they had to start the whole thing over again. Now, keep in mind, this was not the kind of drill you could do once or twice after being in trouble and go back and join your team. This was the type of drill you did over and over and over again until that coach decided she had had enough. Until that player, she thought, had had enough. Which leads us to September 7, 2018. Aubrey Saracen was already out of Burham Road. Rory Street was practicing on the field. Coach Taylor was out there. Coach decided that Rory wasn't playing to her expectations. Senator Burham Road. You're going to hear testimony from one of her teammates named Aubrey. And Aubrey's going to testify that while she was at Burma Road, she could hear Coach Taylor yelling at Rory at the top of her lungs. Get your sorry butt to Burham Road. We might as well run you until you pass out. When Rory got to Burma Road, Aubrey was there already. And Aubrey's going to testify that when she got there, she wasn't doing so good. She was pale. She was struggling. She was complaining of chest pains. And the defendant knew she was struggling too. You're going to learn that Rather than offering Rory some water, rather than sending her to go see the trainer, rather than giving her any kind of relief like shade or a break or anything, the defendant decided to take it one step further in 105 degree heat. The defendant decided she would debut her newest form of punishment, slide drills. Now slide drills is where one player goes full speed to take out the legs of another player in an attempt to get the ball loose. Now you're going to learn based on testimony from Aubrey, based on testimony from Jordan's mom, based on testimony from the defendant herself, that slide tackles can be extremely dangerous. Aubrey will testify that the cleats will shove into your shins. Rory's mom will testify that a slide tackle is what ended her career, shattering her ankle and leg. 
and their coach knew this. The defendant had been coaching soccer for over 20 years, knew just how dangerous a slide tackle could be. But you're going to learn the defendant chose this particular drill for a reason, to teach Rory a lesson. Thought it'd be for her own good. So coach yells out to Rory on Burma Road. Rory, you think you're special? I'm going to show you how special you are not. She summons, him back, summons her back to the field. Rory gets there. The defendant singles her out. Rory's staying in the middle of the field. The coach, the defendant, lines up the rest of her teammates in a single file line. Each one to take turns tackling 17-year-old Rory to the ground. Coach would blow the whistle. Rory would dribble. The teammates would tackle her to the ground. Now, the first time this happened and Rory hit the ground, the coach ran over, yanked her up by the jersey, and said, do it again. Coach would blow the whistle. Rory would dribble. Do it again. Rory would hit the ground. Do it again. Fifteen times, Your Honor. Rory would dribble, Rory would hit the ground, coach would holler, do it again. 15 times, do it again. Over and over and over. Until finally on that 15th time, Rory did not get back up. Rory never got back up. Rory died on that soccer field at 17 years old, at the order of her coach. Power is neither good nor evil. So when someone decides to do with that power, that is important. And this coach decided to abuse her power, abuse her power as a coach, abuse her power to the point that a 17-year-old girl died. For that reason, we've brought this case for wrongful death against the defendant. And as your honor knows, we have the burden of proof in this case, meaning we have to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that the defendant failed to exercise ordinary care and that the defendant's conduct was the proximate cause of Rory Street's death. Now to help us meet our burden in this case, we're gonna call Aubrey Sarris, Rory's teammate and best friend at the stand. And Aubrey's gonna testify to the abusive nature of the coach and his tendencies. We're also going to hear from the defendant herself that she would attend training seminars by the Texas High School Soccer Coaches Association. They would set out guidelines on how to keep players safe, how to keep them in the shade, how to keep them out of the heat, how to do a slide drill properly. And you're going to learn the defendant failed to follow those guidelines. And then you're going to see in that report from Dr. Reagan McConaughey, that Rory died of heat stroke. Now, Your Honor, we want to be the first one to tell you. You're going to see in the autopsy report that Rory had cocaine in her system. But Dr. Reagan McConaughey is going to testify to a reasonable degree of medical certainty that it was not cocaine that killed Rory Street, but it was heat stroke. Power is not good nor evil. It's what a person does with their power that matters. And this, and this coach, she chose to abuse her power over a child until Rory died. The defendant is live or not. All right. Defense, you may proceed. Yes, Your Honor. May it please the court, counsel. No one could have seen this coming. On September 7th, 2018, Rory Street passed away. We don't blame Jordan Street for wanting answers about her child's death. In the wake of a sudden loss, there's grief, there's anger, there's a desire to hold someone responsible, that's only natural. But sometimes in the search for those answers, 
you learn something that you don't want to hear. Your Honor, this is one of those cases where we have a fact that would be difficult for any parent to learn about her child. When Rory Street passed away, she had cocaine in her system. Now her parents, they didn't know that she was using cocaine. Her coaches didn't know, her teammates didn't know. And it's likely that Rory had no idea that combining cocaine with intense physical activity, she didn't know that was a deadly combination. Nobody could have predicted that Rory Street would pass away at soccer practice. And the law tells us that if her death wasn't reasonably foreseeable, then Coach Reese Taylor is not responsible. Now today, I'm proud to represent Coach Taylor. Coach Taylor is a woman who has dedicated 26 years of her life to coaching high school students. She went to college and then immediately started coaching kids. And in the course of her career, she's mentored thousands of students, all of them from right here in Waco. For the past six years of her career, she's been working at Waco High School. She's an excellent coach. In those six years, Miss Taylor has led our girls soccer team to five district titles. Miss Taylor will tell you that while she pushes her players to be the best that they can be and disciplines them when it's appropriate, she cares for each and every one of them, like her own children. When Rory Street passed away on practice, on September 7th, 2018, there was no one, there was no one more shocked than Miss Taylor. She couldn't believe it happened. No one could. And today, as plaintiff just told you, they brought this case into court and therefore they have the burden of proving every element of their claim. And specifically, they need to prove th three things to you that Coach Taylor owed a duty to use ordinary care when coaching her players and disciplining them, which is something we don't contest. They also need to prove that Coach Taylor breached that duty when she disciplined Rory Street and that those actions were the proximate cause of Rory Street's death. Now, as I said, we don't contest that as a coach, of course, it was Coach Taylor's duty to use ordinary care, to coach and keep his players safe. But when we get down to those next two elements, that she breached that duty and caused Rory's death, we disagree. Now, the law gives us a very specific definition of proximate cause. The plaintiff must prove that the act or omission complained of was such that a person using ordinary care would have foreseen the event or some similar event might reasonably result therefrom. Now, in other words, they have to prove that a reasonable person in my client's position would have foreseen that during that practice, Rory was at risk and was going to die. But they're not going to be able to meet that burden today because no one could have seen this coming. Now, the plaintiff just spent a lot of time talking about power, and they accused Coach Taylor of abusing her power. But when you listen to the actual evidence, you're going to learn that there was nothing unreasonable about soccer practice on September 7th. You'll hear that the practice started at the usual time on the same field where it's always held. And while the temperatures did reach 105 degrees that day, it's Waco, Texas. That's pretty standard in September, especially in the beginning. At every practice, Coach Taylor had water bottles available for every player and an athlete and an athletic trainer on site to make sure that someone could do something if anything ever went wrong. All of those safeguards were in place on September 7th of 2018. And when the students goofed off during these types of practices, well, they were disciplined. That discipline included physical activity, and of course it would. 
That's what happens in any sport. The plaintiff's own witness, Aubrey Saracen, well, she's going to admit on the stand that she was disciplined in the exact same way as Rory Street. She had to go run Burma Road. Now, opposing counsel talked about Burma Road a little bit, but I, I want to be clear about what that is. Because Burma Road, it's not a road. There's no traffic on it. It's the name of a drill. It's a drill that's been at Waco High School for decades. Coaches, whenever students would goof off, they'd send them to go run Burma Hill. All it meant was do sprints, crawl on your stomach. You'll see that Coach Taylor's use of discipline wasn't unreasonable. It was normal. Now, Coach Taylor is going to take the stand today and tell you what happened on September 7th. She's also going to tell you that she never instructed Rory to run until she passed out. And even though opposing counsel told you this happened, she certainly never grabbed Rory by the jersey and forced her to her feet when she couldn't stand on her own. And as you listen to Coach Taylor's testimony, you're going to learn that she was not the cause of Rory's death for one important reason. She didn't know Rory had cocaine in her system. And, and without that piece of information, that key piece of information, Coach Taylor just couldn't have foreseen that Rory was going to suffer and pass away in the way that she did. Now today, you'll see an expert report written by Spencer London, an expert in toxicology who's been studying cases like this for 15 years. It's Mr. London's opinion that Rory Street's death was caused by her use of cocaine. Mr. London's report explains that the symptoms Rory was showing that day, they were consistent with cocaine use. That's why we've raised an affirmative defense in response to the plaintiff's allegations. And our affirmative defense is that Rory Street's decision to ingest cocaine before soccer practice on September 7th negligently caused her own death. Your Honor, I started out by telling you that no one could have seen this coming. And the sad reality of this case is that includes Rory Street. I'm sure she never thought she was going to die from using cocaine before soccer practice. Our hearts go out to mystery for what she's going through. But at the end of this trial, one thing will be clear. Coach Taylor just isn't responsible for Rory's death. And that's why I'm going to ask you to find her not liable. Thank you. First witness, plaintiff. Your Honor, the plaintiff calls Aubrey Saracen to the stand. Aubrey Saracen. Will you please introduce yourself to us? Yes. Hi, my name is Aubrey Saracen. Now, Aubrey, we're, we're on a video camera, so I'm going to ask you that you speak up as best you can so we can all hear you, okay? Understood. My name is Aubrey Saracen. Thank you, Aubrey. Tell us where you're from. Yeah, I was born and raised in Waco, Texas. Do you still live in Waco, Texas? I do. Are you in school? I am. What grade are you in? I am a senior at Waco High. You got plans for when you graduate? Yeah, um, I got a merit scholarship at Rice University, so I will be going there to study engineering. Now, in high school, at Waco High School, do you play any sports? I did. Um, played soccer. What position? I played middle uh, field, midfield. Now, are you planning to play in college? I do. I plan to walk on. You know Rory Street, Ms. Okay. I'd like to talk to you about Rory for a minute. How long did you know her? Uh, we've grown up together, so I've known her all my life. Was Rory a pretty good soccer player? Oh, gosh, she was amazing. Um, she's probably, hands down, the best player on the team. Now, Ms. Harrison, before her death, had Rory been struggling with school or family? 
She had. Um, she had talked to me about it a little, um, just talking about the level of stress that it was building up. You know, we were getting on to our senior year and, you know, she had offers here and there. Um, and she just wanted to make sure that she was doing everything as perfect as possible. Now, in all your time knowing Rory, did you ever know her to be a drug user? No, not at all. Now, I want to talk about September 7th, 2018. Where were you that day? I was um, at practice. Can you tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, um, practice usually starts around 3.30 after school. And um, on that day, uh, coach made us have run, do run a scrimmage, basically, um, throughout the day. And um, yeah. I mentioned that practice that day started about 3, 3.30. What time does practice normally start for y'all? It usually starts around that time, right after school. How hot was it that day? It was real hot, like almost, I'm pretty sure it was in the hundreds. Was there any shade there for you guys on the field? No, there wasn't. Now, Ms. Harrison, do you have exhibit two in front of you? I can pull it up real quick. Okay, I have it up. What is exhibit two? Um, this is an aerial view of the soccer practice field. Is that a fair and accurate depiction of the soccer field as you know it at Waco High? It is. Does anything about that field look changed or altered? Uh, no. All right, this time plaintiff offers Exhibit 2 in evidence. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Who's it been? Now, you said you were at, on Burma Road on September 7, 2018. Was Rory there with you? Yes. Why? Um, coach had us run that day because we weren't playing well during the scrimmage, uh, missing some, uh, we were not in our position or something like that. It was one reason or another. I can't remember. Aubrey, who is your coach? Uh, coach Taylor. Is Coach Taylor the defendant in this case? Yes, she is. Now, were you able to hear the defendant ordering Rory to Burma Road? I was. And how about how far were you at Burma Road from the practice field? I was about 20 yards. Could you hear the defendant yelling at Rory? I could. What did the defendant yell at Rory when you heard them? Uh, she started yelling and she was like, go on and take sorry butt to Burma Road. You're useless on the field, so you may as well run until you pass out. How did the defendant appear when she was yelling these things at Rory? Um, when, when she came over to Burma Rose, she looked pale and um, she looked like she was bending over. She was, you know, tired and sweating and red in the face. How did the coach appear when he was yelling or she was yelling at Rory? She was livid, man. She was screaming and at the top of her lungs, um, red in the face with everything, just mad. Now, Aubrey, was there any medical staff or coaching staff? monitoring you guys on Burma Road? No. Was the defendant, or let me ask you a better question. Where was the defendant when you guys were on Burma Road? She was on the practice field um, watching the scrimmage game go on. Now, while you and Rory were at Burma Road, how was Rory running? You could describe that to us. Uh, she wasn't running well at all. Uh, she was slow uh, when she did the sprint. She you know, was feeling with the dribbling of the ball and the bear crawls was half effort at best. About how close to you were, were you to Rory the whole time you guys were doing these drills? I was about a few feet. Now, did you ask Rory, I know you mentioned that she was pale and not feeling well. Did you ask her if she was all right? I did. Um, and she told me, you know, that she was feeling funny and that her chest was hurting. Were you concerned? I was. What did you do? I, I didn't do anything. Aubrey, why not? I coach, the way she t coaches men is brutal. She, I knew that if I complained about, uh, or even if Rory complained about how they, we were feeling that we were tired, she would just make us run harder. Objection, Your Honor, as to improper character evidence or, or speculation, if I could explain. Mm -hmm. What this witness just stated is that if she had mentioned a complaint to Coach Taylor, that Coach Taylor would have acted in a way that she didn't appreciate, would have been uh, aggressive or combative in response. 
that is outside the rationally based perception of this witness, unless this witness is speaking of specific past events, in which case it's improper character evidence being offered for propensity. Response. You know, I can lay the foundation as to why Ms. Saracen should be able to testify to what she just testified. All right, well, as to the last uh, response and that being speculation is sustained, go where you need to now. Now, Ms. Ms. Saracen, how long have you played soccer at Waco High? Uh, I've played four years. Who has been your coach the entire time you've been there? Coach Taylor. Who is the only coach you've ever been at practice with? Coach Taylor. And while you've played for Coach Taylor, have you been able to determine his tendencies and you guys know how not to step on his toes? Yes. How could you end up stepping on his toes? By complaining. Her toes, excuse me. By complaining about how he's been. Objection, Your Honor. At this point, what we're talking about are those past incidences that are being offered to show that in the past, Coach Taylor acted in one way and therefore he or she would have acted that way on September 7th. That's impermissible uh, propensity evidence. Your Honor, we're not offering this evidence to show what Coach Taylor would have done, but instead as to why uh, Rory did not complain and as to why Aubrey did not complain, it's their own knowledge. All right, over. Now, you mentioned that the defendant was yelling at Rory while you guys were at Burma Road. What else did the defendant yell at Rory? Um, well, after a couple minutes, you know, she, I guess Coach Taylor had looked over and she yelled at her and saying, damn it, you don't practice work crap. You know, she, you're lollygagging over there and I guess you're special. So why don't you come over here and I'll show you how not special you are. Aubrey, what happened? after the defendant told Rory she would tell, show Rory how not special she was. She stopped the scrimmage on the practice field and had the entire team line up in the middle of the field. Uh, and then she made Rory come over, back over to the practice field, had her line up in front of them about 10 yards away um, and rolled the ball over to Rory. And she told, she told the team that Rory was going to go towards them with the ball, dribbling them, dribbling the ball, and that they were going to side tackle. Now, Aubrey, let's talk about the slide tackle drill. What exactly is a slide tackle in its general sort, in its so, general term? Yeah, so a slide tackle is a defense that we use in soccer. Um, basically, what happens is that the defense player would go at the office player who has the ball and kind of slide onto the ground with their feet outstretched towards the ball and the player's feet. Um, feet. Can slide tackles be dangerous? It can be. Um, eventually, you know, um, you're, you're going at the ball, but you, the ball is at the person's feet. So you can eventually trip up the person. And many times, if you do that successfully, the person falls on the ground. Now, when you play soccer, are you wearing cleats? Yes. Where do those cleats go when you're slide tackling someone? Um, it's going at your shins, you know. Sometimes it can hit your calf, your ankles even. Now you mentioned that coach, the defendant, put Rory through these slide tackle drills. You mentioned they lined up on the line, but tell us exactly how they went down. So Coach Taylor, once everybody was lined up and set in a position, Coach Taylor blew the whistle. And Rory started dripping the ball towards the first player. And that player went towards her slid tackle her, Rory fell to the ground, and then I saw Coach Taylor pull her up from her jersey and have her come back to uh, the starting point and said, next, going on to the next one. And so she did it again. She blew her whistle, Coach Taylor blew her whistle, and Rory started dribbling again. And the second player went at Rory, slid tackle, Rory hit the ground, and it continued. Aubrey, who was instructing you and Rory's teammates to sack her to the ground? Coach Taylor was. Now, where were you when all this was happening? I was still on the part of the field where um, I was doing Burma Rose, but I had stopped at that point and watched what was going on. About how far were you from the field? About 20 yards. 
Were you able to see Rory? Yes. How did Rory appear then? She didn't look any better than what she did when I was watching her do Burma Rhodes. Uh, she was still pale. She looked lifeless even. Um, she, wasn't, she wasn't in her full potential. Aubrey, how many times did the defendant make your teammates tackle Rory to the ground? 15 times. During all your years playing soccer, during all your years playing soccer for Coach Taylor, have you ever seen anything like this? Never. Have you ever heard anything like this? No. Uh, Aubrey, I know this might be difficult. Can you tell us what happened after that 15th time Rory was tackled? Well, when Rory got hit, she fell to the ground and she didn't get up. She started convulsing. Um, at that point, you know, it was, she wasn't breathing, it looked like. So the ambulance was called. What were you doing? What were you doing during that time? I was in shock. So I pretty much was just staring and wondering what was going to happen to my best friend. Aubrey, did the ambulance make it in time? They didn't. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Else? May I proceed? Yes, sir. Good evening, Ms. Saracen. I want to start by talking to you about what soccer practice was like on September 7, 2018. Now, you told us that practice started around 3.15, 3.30 that day. That's correct. And that was the normal start time for your practices. Right. And on that day, you were practicing outside? Yes. On a practice field? Yes. That is where you normally practice for the varsity soccer team at Waco High School? Correct. So there was nothing unusual about practicing outside, right, ma'am? No. Now, it was really hot that day. You told us that already, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. It was above 100 degrees, you felt like. I'm sorry, ma'am, did you hear my question? You said it was above 100 degrees? Yeah. Yes, ma'am, it was your understanding that it, it might have been above 100 degrees. Yes. But that's typical weather for Waco in September. That's correct. And you were on the team for four years. Early September is when the season started for Waco High School. Correct. So every year you were out outside practicing in that heat. Yes. And at every practice, Coach Taylor had water bottles for all of you. Yes. And on September 7th, just like every other practice, Coach Taylor had those water bottles. Correct. The Waco High athletic trainer was also at every one of your practices. Correct. That was Miss Jess Merriweather. Yes. Miss Merriweather, her job was to keep students like yourself safe. Correct. To watch over you. Yes. And on September 7th, just like every other practice, okay. Miss Merriweather was at that practice. She was. Now, as you told us, on September 7th, you were asked to go run Burma Road. Correct. And a little bit after you started, Rory was also asked to run Burma Road. More like told, but yes, we were told to go to Burma Road. That's right. So Coach Taylor would tell you, go run Burma Road. Right. <clears throat> now, Burma Road, that's not actually a road, is it, ma'am? No. It's a drill, right? Correct. It's a drill that soccer players at Waco High have been doing for a long time. Correct. They've been doing it ever since you started playing there. Yes. And you and Rory aren't the only people on your team to run that drill. No, we weren't. At pretty much everyone on that team had done that drill at some point or another. Yeah, that's true. 
Now, it's not unusual for Coach Taylor to ask a player to go do that drill. No. Normally, he'd do that after you weren't performing well in practice. Correct. And on that day, that's why you were asked to go do that drill. Right. Now, when Rory came over to run that with you, she told you she was feeling funny. Correct. But Rory never told Coach Taylor that she was feeling poorly. No. Never told the athletic trainer that she was feeling poorly. She didn't. Never told Coach Taylor that she needed a break. Not to my knowledge, no. Never stopped to try and get some water. No. She never told Coach Taylor or the athletic trainer that she needed medical attention. Correct. But running Burma Road, that wasn't the only drill you did that day, right, ma'am? Me? Well, that the team did. Um, we had a scrimmage. and then So you had a scrimmage. And I, I apologize, ma'am. You can finish. Uh, we had the scrimmage. And if we weren't doing the scrimmage, we were doing Burma Rose because we weren't playing well in the scrimmage. But that was it on that day. And you heard Coach Taylor say that Rory was still goofing around. Right. So Coach Rory or Coach Taylor asked Rory to come over and do a different drill with the team. Yes. A slide tackle drill. Yes. Now, on direct examination, you said slide tackles can be dangerous. Yes. But ma'am, slide tackles are a normal part of playing soccer, right? That's correct. You've performed slide tackles in games. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, ma'am, is that a yes? Yes, sorry. And people have performed slide tackles on you. Correct. And in your experience, Slide tackles aren't dangerous. I wouldn't say in my experience they aren't dangerous. You know, you do get hurt every once in a while. So I understand that you can get hurt every once in a while, but generally speaking, slide tackles aren't dangerous. Sure. Oh, well, ma'am, I, I want to be clear. Do you believe that slide tackles generally are not dangerous? As a soccer player, yes, they're not dangerous. Okay. Now, you didn't participate in that drill. I did not, no. But you've been in slide tackle drills before. Not of this capacity, but, uh, you know, yeah, I've been in slide tackle drills. So to clarify, this was a new drill that Coach Taylor had you doing that day. That she had the, other, the rest of the team doing against Rory that day, yes. But in the past, she's done those drills, slide tackle drills before, just a different kind. Yes. Now, on direct examination, you said that when you saw Rory, it was clear that she was struggling. Correct. That she looked lifeless to you. Right. Now, the day after Rory's death, you received a text message from your friend, David Wooderson. That's correct. You would recognize a screenshot of those text messages if you saw them? I would. Could you go ahead and, and turn to pick to exhibit 22 in your exhibit notebook and let me know when you're at that document. I'm in there. You recognize the document marked as exhibit 22 in your notebook? I do. That's a screenshot of the text message conversation you had on September 8th, 2018. Correct. And to be clear, September 8th, 2018 was one day after Rory passed away. Right. This is a fair and accurate copy of the text messages you sent and received that day? Yes. Your Honor, at this time, I offer Exhibit 22 into evidence. Can you object? No, Your Honor. 22 is submitted. And Your Honor, permission to display this exhibit? Right. Ms. Saracen, these text messages are the text messages you text messages you exchanged with Mr. Wooderson on September 8th of 2018. Yes. The gray messages, those are from Mr. Wooderson. Yes. Those blue messages are from you. Yes. David started this conversation by asking, hey, I heard about Rory. What the hell happened? Right? Right. 
you responded, Rory just collapsed out of nowhere. Right? Right. And then you texted, it was just so sudden. Correct. One minute, Rory was there. And the next minute, he was lying. She was lying on the ground, dying. I still don't believe it happened. Did I read that correctly? Generally, yeah, I still really don't believe it, yeah. I apologize. I still don't really believe it. I read it correctly that time. Yes. Now, nowhere in these messages do you say that Coach Taylor treated Rory poorly. I didn't, no. In fact, you don't even mention Coach Taylor in these text messages. I don't. Ms. DiGiuseppe, we can take that image down. Thank you. Now, you also told us that Coach Taylor told Rory to run until she passed out. Yes. But you never reported Coach Taylor to anyone at Waco High for saying that? No. Never told your parents that Coach Taylor said that? No. In fact, the very first time you claimed that Coach Taylor told Rory to run until she passed out was when you were deposed for this case. Yes. You also, ma'am, you're good friends with Rory's family. Isn't that right? Yes. You know her mom? I do. And you know that in today's case, it's Rory's mom who is the plaintiff. Yes, I know this. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Now, Aubrey, how hot was it on September 7th, 2018? It was pretty hot. And who was specifically instructed to run Burma Road that day? Coach Taylor did. Coach Taylor instructed who? Uh, me and uh, Rory. Who was the only person in the history of your time at Waco High School to be subjected to the new slide drill? Rory was. Who was tackled to the ground over and over again by each one of her teammates at the authority of the defendant? Rory was. What 17-year-old girl never got to go home then? Rory. Nothing further, Your Honor. No recross. No recross, Your Honor. All right. Next witness. Your Honor, at this time, the plaintiff calls Jordan Street by deposition. I'd cite court and counsel to page two of Ms. Street's deposition, starting with line six. Good morning. Please state your name for the record. My name is Jordan Street. How old are you? I'm 55 years old. Where are you from? Uh, I live in Waco and I have a wife. Are you married? I am not. I was married, but my spouse passed away several years ago. Do you have any children? I did. My daughter, Rory. What happened to Rory? She died at soccer practice on September 7th of 2018. Signing court and counsel to page two, starting with line eight. How old was Rory at the time of her death? 17 years old. Was Rory in high school? Yes. Where did she go to school? Rory went to Waco High, just like me. Did Rory participate in any sports? Yes, uh, she played varsity soccer for the school. Uh, she also played soccer for a private traveling club team on the weekends. To be honest, that kid's life was pretty much soccer 24-7. Getting her to read a book was the hard part. I had court counsel at page seven, starting with line eight. Did, Re did Rory regularly visit her pediatrician? Uh, at least once a year for physical. 
during any of those yearly physicals, were there any issues? No. Uh, Rory had never had any serious medical issues, just normal kid stuff. I think court and counsel to page eight, starting with line three. Do you know what a slide tackle is? Sure. Are slide tackles part of the game of soccer? Oh, of course they are. Turn on any game and you're going to see players at every level performing slide tackles. That is part of the deal. Are slide tackles violent? They can be. I mean, it's soccer, so the injuries are pretend acting. But anytime you're running full speed and you slide feet first at another player's legs, that can be a dangerous situation. Sign court counsel line 18. Yes, just looking for mechanics here. I'm not really sure what a slide tackle is. Well, at a very basic level, you could collide with the player and trip them or knock them to the ground. And again, you're running fast, so that, could, that collision can be violent. Also, you're talking about leg-on-leg -leg contact, so there is always risk for a knee injury or an ankle injury or even a broken bone. Look, I know what some people think about soccer, but it can be a very violent game at times. That's the witness, Your Honor. Does the defense have any questions of this witness? No, Your Honor. Next witness. Your Honor, that's it for the witnesses for the plaintiff. But before the plaintiff rests, the plaintiff offers Exhibit 14, the autopsy report and the evidence. Uh, per the court's pretrial order number three, Exhibit 14 is authentic. Furthermore, under FR Federal Rules of Evidence 8038, this is a public record and admissible over here, say, Your Honor. Any objection? No, Your Honor, no objection. Submitted. This time, the plaintiff rests, Your Honor. First witness by the defense. Yes, Your Honor. Defense calls Reese Taylor. May proceed, guys. Yes, Your Honor. Good evening. Could you please introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, I'm Reese Taylor. How old are you, Miss Taylor? I am 48 years old. Where do you live? Um, I live in Waco, Texas. Um, I've been lived here my whole life, but except for when I was in college. So what do you do? Um, I am the varsity coach um, of the soccer team at Waco. I'm also the um, health teacher at Waco High School. So you hold two different jobs at Waco High? Yes. And how long have you held both of those jobs at Waco High School? I've been at Waco High School for six years. Did you have any coaching experience before you got this job? Yes, um, I've been coaching for about 30 years now. And in that time period, have you only coached soccer or any other sports? Um, I've coached just about every sport you can think of. Um, I've done basketball, baseball, um, soccer, uh, softball, anything really. Do you have any formal training in coaching? Um, well, I have my uh, bachelor's degree in uh, physical education from Texas A&M. Um, and then I also attend um, different conferences and training sessions throughout the state of Texas. Now, Ms. Taylor, I want to turn to what happened in this case. How do you know Rory Street? Um, Rory Street was one of my soccer players. Do you remember, well, could you tell us a little bit about Rory? When was she your player? Yeah, um, so Rory was my player, um, oh gosh, so 2018 would have been her senior season, so um, also 17, from 15, 2015 to 2018, um, she played all four years in high school, um, so yeah, that, I had her for her high school career. Now, we heard testimony today that Rory Street passed away in one of your practices. Do you remember when that was? Yes, I do. When was that? Um, that was September 7th, 2018. Was there a practice scheduled for that day? Yes, there was. And when was that practice scheduled to start? Uh, I was scheduled to start after school, like all of our practices are. Usually that's um, like 3.15, 3.30.
did you have a specific plan for what the team would do during that practice? Yes. What was that plan? Um, that day we were going to be running a scrimmage um, to prepare for um, upcoming games. And during that practice, did anything happen that altered your plan to hold a scrimmage? Yes. What happened? Um, I had a couple of players who were not um, focusing, listening, um, running the drill, like we were running the practice like we were supposed to. And um, so I had to send them um, to Burnell Road, which altered the scrimmage. Was Rory one of those players you sent to Burma Road? Yes, she was. Do you remember why you asked Rory to go and do that drill? Yeah. Um, so Rory usually was one of my better players. She was the best player on the team, really. Um, and that day, I remember that she was just kind of slacking off. She was missing passes. Um, she wasn't getting the ball where she was supposed to in the plays, putting in a good position. Um, she was missing easy shots and it just, it felt like she was slacking off. So I, I thought she needed um, to refocus and recenter and go run the drill. Is that why you asked her to run Burma Road? Yes, to go re refocus and get ready to practice. And could you explain to us what it means when you say go run Burma Road? Sure. Um, so Burma Road is a drill um, that we use for disciplinary purposes. Um, it's been around for as long as I've been around. I ran Burma Road in high school myself. I played for Waco High, so it's been 30 years. Um, and it's where the player goes and sprints 30 yards and then dribbles the soccer ball for 30 yards, makes a shot on an open goal, and then bear crawls back. When you asked Rory to go and perform that drill, did she? She did. Um, she went over to where we performed Burma Road and she started running it. Now, just a few minutes ago, Miss Aubrey Saracen testified. Were you in court when she testified? Yes. Do you remember her testifying that you instructed Rory to run until she passed out? I remember hearing that. Ma'am, did you ever tell Rory to go run until she passed out? No, I did not. And Ms. Taylor, I, I want to pause here for a moment. When you asked Rory to go do that exercise, did you think it would endanger her health? No, I never thought it would endanger her health. And at that point in practice, did you notice anything unusual about Rory's appearance? Her appearance? Uh, no, not at all. Before running the drill, did Rory ask you for a break? No, she never asked for a break. Did she say anything about feeling poorly? No, she didn't say she felt poorly. Now, after she started doing this drill, what happened next? Um, well, so she went over there and um, she was supposed to be running the drill, but she wasn't really focusing on it. She was still kind of messing around, goofing off, not really trying hard to um, complete the drill like it's supposed to be completed. So um, I asked her to come do a different drill with the team. Why did you change up the drill? Um, well, it just really, it seemed like the Burma Road wasn't making her refocus and recenter on practice like it's supposed to. Um, and we need all of our players on board and ready to practice. And so I thought maybe having her run a different drill would get her mindset back into the um, determined state it should be in to practice. Now, Miss Taylor, when you notice Rory goofing off for this second time, where was she? She was... Um, at Burma Road over on the sideline. How far away from you was she at that time? Oh, goodness. Probably 20 or 30 yards away from me. I'm not sure. And where were these practice, where was this practice being held? The practice was held at our normal practice field, the field out by the high school. Your Honor, permission to redisplay what's already been entered into evidence as Exhibit 2? Miss mm -hmm. Taylor, do you recognize this image? Yes, I do. 
What's in this image? This is the um, practice field where uh, the soccer team practices at the high school. So what's in this blue box? That is the practice field that we use for practices for our scrimmages and everything. And how about that red box? What's in that? The red box is the sideline where we um, send the girls to run for a row. So when you noticed that Rory was goofing off, where was she in this photograph? She was in the red box. And where were you? Um, I was in the blue box um, running the scrimmage with my other girls. Thank you, Miss D. Giuseppe. We can take that down now. Now, Miss Taylor, you said you asked Rory to do a different kind of drill. Could you describe that drill? Yeah, um, it was a um, slide tackle drill. Um, I asked her to come dribble the ball down the field and have her teammates um, try to get the ball away from her. Have you done slide tackle drills at practice before? We had done slide tackle drills, yes, but not this specific drill. So then why did you choose to use this specific drill on September 7th? Um, I don't really remember my exact like thinking behind it other than I wanted uh, Rory to be able to um, really have to focus in on what she was doing to get her mind really um, centered back on the purpose of practice and why we, why we practice out there every day and just really get her rethinking about soccer. Ms. Taylor, I want to pause again. Before you started this drill, did Rory ask you for a break? No, she didn't. Tell you she was feeling poorly? She didn't say anything like that. And when you thought of this slide tackle drill, did you think that it would endanger Rory's health? No, I absolutely did not think that. So what happened once the drill started? Um, so once the drill started, uh, Rory started um, dribbling the ball, going down uh, the line and her teammates were, uh, would run at her and then slide tackle to try to get the ball out from under her. Um, some of those contacts did come in contact with Rory's legs, so she stumbled a little bit um, and she was, she was struggling with the drill. It's not an easy drill to keep your balance and get the ball and deal with your teammates, but um, she was doing the drill. She seemed to be doing fine. Did it surprise you that Rory seemed like she was struggling with the drill a little bit? I mean, it didn't surprise me that she was struggling with the, the skill set of the drill. It was a difficult drill. Um, it was meant to challenge her, um, but I, I mean, I never thought she was struggling in, the, in any other manner than it was a difficult drill. So how did the drill end? Um, well, I mean, Rory got hit by one of her players, one of her teammates in a slide tackle and she collapsed and obviously the drill ended right there. What happened after she fell to the ground? Um, if I remember like clearly, I believe she seized and we had to get medical help and um, it, was, it was a little, it was crazy. Did medical help come in time? No. How did you react to seeing this happen? I was shocked. I never, I never would have imagined this happening. Ms. Taylor, do you take any steps to keep your student athletes safe at practices? Yes, of course I take steps. I want to keep my players safe. What steps do you take? Um, well, we have, we always have water for our players and um, we allow them to take breaks whenever they need them. If, if we notice they need a break, we'll give it to them. Or if they ask, we'll give it to them. And then we always have our athletic trainer on the field as well to handle any injuries that come about um, or illnesses that come about during practice. On September 7th, did Rory ever ask to go speak to the trainer, Miss Merriweather? No, she never did. Before Rory collapsed, did you have any reason to believe that she wasn't feeling well? No, I had no reason to believe she wasn't feeling well. Did you have any reason to believe that she may have ingested drugs before coming to practice? 
No, I had absolutely no reason to believe or know that she had ingested drugs. Ms. Taylor, would you ever allow a student to attend a practice if you knew they were under the influence of an illegal drug? No, absolutely not. That would not be a reason to be practicing at all. Pass the witness, Your Honor. And if you have any uh, cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we'll proceed. Ms. Taylor, you've been a coach just about most of your life, is that right? Yes. I'm going to ask you to speak up a little bit. I'm sorry, I can't hear you too well. Yes, I have been. Now, you've coached sports ever since you left college? Yes, I have. About 26 years? Yes. Specifically, you've coached soccer for about 20 of those years? Yes, I've done 20 seasons, yeah. Now, right now, in four, you've been coaching soccer as a varsity soccer coach at Waco High School. Yes. You've been coached there for about the past six years? Yes, I have. Now, even though you've coached a long time, you still like to keep up to date in coaching practices? Yes, I do. You like to stay up to date on the latest information? Yes. Stay up to date? So you, let me ask you a better question. In an attempt to stay up to date, you like to attend coaching seminars? I do attend seminars, yes. Okay. And where, and that's where you learn about the latest coaching techniques? Yes, that's where I learn what others are doing, what's being done recently. But these are not the only meetings you go to as a coach. Sure. You also attend the meetings that all high school soccer coaches attend in Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the months leading to Rory's death, you attended one of those meetings. I did attend a meeting in that summer, yes. Ms. Taylor, do you have Exhibit 11 in front of you? Um, I can't even pick it. Yes. Now these slides, they were presented at the meeting, correct? Yes, they were. And they outlined several guidelines for coaches to use. They do. For conducting practices in the heat. Yes. And this slide presentation, this is a fair and accurate depiction of what you saw when you went to that training that day. Yes, it is. Nothing looks changed or altered. Not that I noticed. Your Honor, at this time, plaintiff offers Exhibit 11 into evidence. Your Honor, objection on hearsay grounds. Your Honor, the, the defense opened the door to this when they asked Ms. Taylor, what steps do you take to keep players safe? This evidence goes to show notice. Your Honor, if I may respond. Yes. If, when we asked Ms. Taylor about what she specifically did at practices to keep her players safe, we didn't open the door, allowing any hearsay evidence about any sort of best practices regarding soccer coaches. If this, uh, if opposing counsel has specific questions about what happened at practice, that would be effective rebuttal testimony. But this, I, I apologize if I, could, if I could continue. I appreciate it. Um, these slideshow presentations, we don't know where the information is from. We don't know who put those slide presentations together or made these statements. And on top of that, there's no exception under hearsay to allow these to come into the truth, which is what they're being offered as. Your Honor, opposing counsel's question was not about what safety precautions were taken in practice, but what safety precautions were taken, period. Furthermore, we do know who furnished this report. It was the Texas High School Soccer Coaches Association. And the defendant testified that she attended that seminar and liked to keep up to date, like to stay trained on the recent practices. And this was one of those recent practices. This goes to notice. Well, first of all, I want to sustain the objection is to hearsay. You're welcome to ask her about specific things that may be in there, uh, whether she's familiar, things of that nature. But, but I think clearly this is, is hearsay as far as the PowerPoint itself. And so that objection will be sustained. Your Honor, just for clarification, the plaintiff is allowed to inquire about the topics within and goes to the knowledge of the defendant? Yes, sir. Okay. 
And Ms. Taylor, the Texas Soccer Coaches Association requires a five minute break every 30 minutes of practice when temperatures reach 96 to 99 degrees. Is that right? Um, that is the guideline that they provide, yes. Objection, Your Honor, again, as to hearsay, what opposing counsel is doing is just reading the statements from this document as in the form of a question, not asking about the underlying knowledge. But this is the training that she recently attended, correct? Yes, Your Honor. And this was a part of her employment as a soccer coach was to go for this training? That's correct. Your Honor, we do know that this is something that she chose to do. I'm, I'm not sure she was under any duty to attend. Objection will be overruled. Okay. Ms. Taylor, I'm going to ask you again. The Texas Soccer Coaches Association requires a five-minute break every 30 minutes of practice when temperatures reach 96 to 99 degrees. Those are their recommended guidelines, yes. Those were the recommended guidelines they taught the day you went to their seminar. Yes. They require that a five minute break every 15 minutes of practice when temperatures reach 100 degrees. That is in the guidelines, yes. And the Coaches Association requires practices not to exceed two hours total outdoors. That is also in the guidelines, yes. But your practices usually went on for two to three hours. Um, I really, I don't know exactly how long my practices went on. Ms. Taylor, would it help if I refresh your recollection? Sure. Your Honor, for the purpose of this trial, would it be all right if opposing, if a co-counsel showed the deposition via uh, share screen to Ms. Taylor to refresh her like rec recollection. Yeah, as long as it's shown, yes, just to, just to her. Constructively, Your Honor, it would be hard to do it otherwise. All right. Andrew, would you please show Ms. Taylor that portion of her deposition to which would refresh her recollection? Ms. Taylor, can you see that? Yes. All right, I want you to read that and then let me know when you've read it. I've read it. Is your recollection refreshed? Yes, it is. Okay, Andrew, you can take that down. Thank you. Now, Ms. Taylor, I'm going to ask you again. Your practices usually went on for two to three hours. Yeah, sometimes I went on for two to three hours. Ms. Taylor, let's fast forward from that meeting you attended in June to September of 2018. You were having practice that day. Yes, we were. Outside, of course. Yes. Around 3.15 to 3.30 in the afternoon. That's when we started, yes. You'd agree with that summers are hot in Texas. Yes. Septembers are hot in Texas. Yes, they are. And you'd also agree with me that 3 o'clock in the afternoon can be particularly hot. I'm uh, sure. You prefer practices to be particularly hot. Um, I prefer practices to resemble what our games will be like, yes. Well, Ms. Taylor, you agree with me that most of your games are later in the evening. I mean, our games are anywhere after school. Some of them are in the evening, and it can still be over 100 degrees at 7 p.m. Ms. Taylor, is it your testimony that your games are not later in the evening in September? I don't recall. I'm going to ask you the question again. You prefer your practices to be hot. Is that right? I prefer them to be in the conditions that our games are in, yes. Well, you want to condition your players. So that they're capable of playing games, yes. To use your words, you want to toughen them up. Sure. To use your words, you like to see if the team can, and I quote, hold up under the sun. Yes. So you decided to have your team practice on that day for two to three hours. Yes, I did. Matter of fact, you decided to have your team run full team scrimmages for two to three hours. I mean, they, we had planned on scrimmaging that day, yes. 
We did scrimmage that day, is that right? We started one and then we had to alter our plans. Because Roy, Roy Street died? No, that's not why we altered our plans originally. Okay. But thank you for reminding me. Well, you didn't alter your plans because of the heat? No. Okay. You were actually getting frustrated with Rory that day, weren't you? Yes, I was. Because you thought Rory was dogging you. Yes, I did. You said she was missing passes. She was. She was not in the right position. She wasn't. She didn't seem to be listening to you. She wasn't. This was not typical behavior for Rory, was it? No, it was not. To use your words, she just seemed different that day. Yeah. You did not ask Rory what was wrong? No, I did not. Even though this behavior seemed odd to you, you didn't check to see if she was okay? No. Didn't ask for the trainer to check on her? No, I did not. Instead, you sent her to Burma Road. Yes, I did. To run sprints? Yes, I did. To sprint for 30 yards? Yes. Then dribble the ball another 30 yards? Yes. Then she had a fire shot on an open goal. Yes. And then bear crawl on her hands and feet back to the start. Yes. Bear crawl on her hands and feet for 60 yards. Yes. In triple digit heat. Yes. And if she messed up, she had to start all over again. Yes. And Rory repeated this cycle until you decided she had had enough. Sure. More specifically, until you wanted her to stop. Yes. Because nothing gets you more angry than a player who is not listening. That's true. Nothing will get you heated up quicker in your words. Yep. And you wanted to teach Rory a lesson. I wanted to discipline her, yes. You wanted to teach her a lesson. Sure. Is that a yes? Yes. But that still wasn't enough, was it? No. You thought Rory was dogging in on Burma Road again? That's correct. You were not going to let Rory get away with what you thought was dogging it, were you? No. Because you say the rest of the players might fall into that same type of line as well. Correct. So you decided to make an example of Rory. Sure. You wanted to give Rory a different punishment this time. Different discipline, yes. Discipline her another way. Yes. You did not ask Rory if she was tired. I did not. You did not ask Rory if she was sick. I did not. You did not ask Rory if she was hurting. I did not. Instead, you commanded Rory to come back to the practice field. Yes, I did. Stand opposite her teammates. Yep. And have every single member of your team line up across Rory. Yes, I did. In a single file line. That's correct. You ordered, you ordered Rory to dribble the ball? I did. And you commanded those players, those teammates, to try and slide tackle Rory when you blew your whistle. I, that's what I told them to do, yes. You told them to do that. That was the drill. You wanted them to sl slide tackle her for a reason. I wanted them to perform the drill, yes. Well, slide tackles are hard tackles, aren't they? They can be. Well, that's why you wanted the teammates to do that, because they're hard tackles. Those are your words. Sure. Is that a yes? I don't recall my exact words at this time. Okay. So you would not agree with me that you ordered her teammates to tackle her with lots of physical contact? I'm not disagreeing with you. I just don't recall that that is my exact wording. So you'd agree with that slide tackles can entail a lot of physical contact? They can, yes. Okay. And you wanted to make sure that Rory got the point. I wanted to discipline her. 
you wanted to make sure Rory got the point. Those were your words. Sure. Is that a yes? Again, I don't recall my exact words at this time, but I'm sure. All right, Ms. Taylor, that point that you were trying to make was that you didn't want to tolerate her efforts any longer. Sure. Is that a yes? Is that what you were doing, Ms. Taylor? I was trying to discipline her so that she would put her effort back into practice because I felt she was not committing herself to the practice that we were having. Meaning you were not tolerating her efforts. She wasn't putting in the efforts. Is that a yes, Ms. Taylor? I'm going to ask you that you answer my questions. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding your question. I already told you I don't remember my exact words. All I asked you, I'm a director at that. All I asked you is that you weren't tolerating her efforts any longer. Is that correct? I guess. Is that a yes? I don't want you to guess. You just testified she wasn't putting in the efforts that you wanted, so she, you weren't tolerating her efforts. Would that be correct? Sure. That's a weird way to word that. I apologize. I'm going to need you to ask her, answer yes or no for me, please, ma'am. Yes. And just to be clear, Ms. Taylor, you have never done a drill like this before. I had not done that drill before, no. In almost 30 years of coaching, you have never done anything like this. Never done that drill, no. Ms. Taylor, you had Rory tackled 15 times. I had her teammates run at her, yes. 15 times. Yes, there were 15 players. 15 times you blew your whistle. Yes. 15 times you had a player tackle her to the ground. Yes. And 15 times you made her get up and do it again. Yes, I had her do it 15 times. You could tell she was wearing down. Sure. Is that a yes? I'm, yes, she was getting tired. You could see that she was hurt. No, I could not tell she was hurt. Your testimony is you could not tell she was hurt. No. Andrew? Your Honor, I'm going to object at this point. This is the, the, the way this is being presented is an improper impeachment. If there are a line of questions that need to be asked and then this witness needs to be given the opportunity to review her whole deposition, and, and that's not what's happening here. Your Honor, I didn't ask the witness if she made her, her recollection reflect, reflect. I asked her if, if her testimony was not what I asked the question, and she, her testimony and the answer to the question contradicted with what she testified previously. She denied that she testified that way previously at this point. We're going to show her that position where she testified the other direction. Well, at this point, I hadn't given permission to put that up. So let's pull that down and we'll talk about it. All right, so what's happening? Your Honor, I asked Ms. Taylor if she could tell that Rory Street was hurt and she said no. I asked, is that your testimony here today? That she was not hurt and that's a yes. She said yes. When I asked her this question the last time we met, she answered the opposite direction. She said Rory was hurt. Your Honor, my uh, I, I understand that opposing counsel is attempting to start an, impe an impeachment. My uh, problem with the impeachment was simply the form of that impeachment before this witness, Ms. Taylor, is confronted with any statements that, that opposing counsel thinks are inconsistent. There needs to be foundation, and you can't just put the exhibit or her deposition up without any of that foundation being asked first. And that's why I objected. All right. Well, if there was a specific question asked about whether or not this witness, the victim was, the decedent was hurt, uh, and you'd like to refresh your recollection of that, you can do that. Uh, but don't just start throwing deposition testimony up out there without to uh, making sure it's exactly inconsistent, I guess would be the best way to put it. So I you, can, our, uh, you can show it to her constructively. This is just between just you showing the witness. We're not showing yes, the witness. Yes, sir. That's what I was attempting to carry out. Do it quickly. All right, Andrew.
All right, Ms. Taylor, I'm going to ask that you read what's on the board and look up at me and let me know when you read it. I've read it. Okay, thank you. Andrew, you can take it down. Now, when asked if Rory appeared hurt, you said, well, yeah, sure. She was struggling. That was the point. Is that correct? Objection, Your Honor. Again, I'm going to object to the form of this impeachment. This witness has not been given the opportunity to review the document that opposing counsel just put up has not been given the opportunity to make sure that it is a complete and fair copy of that deposition. And because we don't have that foundation, this impeachment is improper at this time. Your Honor, this is not an impeachment. This is a refreshed recollection like we talked about. She looked up at me and let me know that she had read it. And then I asked her the question again. All right, well, I will, uh, I'll presume that that's, that is the, uh, the deposition testimony. Let's, uh, let's, the objection's overruled. Let's move along, counsel. We've got a long Ms. Taylor, after the last time you had Rory tackled, she collapsed. Is that correct? Yes, she did. After the last time you had Rory tackled, she collapsed on the field. Yes, she did. After the last time you had Rory tackled, she collapsed on the field and never got up. That's correct. Pass the witness, Your Honor. Any uh, redirect? Uh, yes, Your Honor. May I proceed? Yes, sir. You know, Coach Taylor, you were asked a couple questions about wanting to teach Rory a lesson. Did you want to teach Rory a lesson on September 7th? I mean, yes, but not in the manner that was just portrayed. I wanted her to learn that she needed to be focused that she needed to listen to a coach telling her that she should participate in a drill and that she needed to put an effort. Ms. Taylor, you told us already that, that you're a coach and a teacher. As a part of your job, do you teach students lessons? Yes, I do. We have lesson plans every single day. In, in your mind, is there anything malicious about teaching a student a lesson? No. No further questions, Your Honor. Any recross? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. Next witness. Your Honor, at this time, we would like to read in portions of deposition testimony from an unavailable witness, Ms. Jess Merriweather. May my second chair, Ms. D. Giuseppe, turn on her video to read the answers as I read the questions? Yes, granted. And directing court and counsel to page two of Jess Merriweather's deposition, starting at line six, going to line 20. Good morning. Would you please state your name for the record? Hello there. My name is Jess Merriweather. How old are you, Jess? I am 28 years old. Where do you live? I live in Waco, Texas. How long have you lived in Waco? Just a couple of years now. I grew up in Houston, then I went to Texas A&M for undergrad, and then I got a master's degree in sports training from A&M as well. After that, I worked for a couple of years at another high school in College Station before I got the job at Waco High. And what is your job at Waco High? I am an athletic trainer and I also teach health. Directing court and counsel to page three, reading lines 13 through 18. Did you do any athletic training while you were at A&M? That was the whole point of the program. I worked with football players, track athletes, basketball players, and more while completing my master's degree in sports training. So it isn't like the job at Waco High was the first time that I've ever done athletic training. Moving now to page eight, lines eight through nine. Were you at practice the day Rory died? I was. Now jumping down to lines 18 through 24, also on page eight. At any time, did you see Rory stumbling, faltering, or slowing down 
in a way that would have indicated she was in trouble? No, not at all. Was Rory sweating hard? I mean, yes, but everyone was, including me. It was a really hot day. Directing important counsel to page nine, lines nine through 11. Are players allowed to get water when they want it? Yes. All they have to do is ask, even if we're not on a water break. Thank you, Ms. Giuseppe. Nothing further from the deposition of Jess Merriweather, Your Honor, but at this time, I would ask permission to display two documents that are already in evidence, starting with exhibit, oh. yes, Your Honor. Is there any cross of that witness? Yes, I apologize. Uh, you may proceed. Citing court and counsel to page four of Meriwether deposition, starting with line 12. Do you have any role in designing drills for practices? No, that is all Coach Taylor. Do you have any role in disciplining players? No, that is all Coach Taylor as well. I'm certainly there overseeing any on-field discipline that takes place, but I'm not directing that discipline or deciding who should be disciplined. Citing court and counsel at page 10, line six. Do you still work at Waco High? Yeah, I got promoted to head trainer about two months ago, so it's going great. You still work with Coach Taylor? Of course I do. Uh, I work with all the coaches, Coach Taylor included. In fact, Coach Taylor is the one that wrote me the recommendation letter for the promotion to head trainer. Again, Coach Taylor has a lot of faith in me and my abilities, and I just want to try to impress her. That's the witness, Ron. Anything further of this witness? No, Your Honor. All right. You may proceed then. You were asking about documents. Yes, Your Honor. We ask permission to display two documents, one at a time, starting with Exhibit 15, the toxicology report that was admitted at, by stipulation at pretrial. Yes. Ms. Giuseppe, can we put that document on the screen? Your Honor, we would like to note for the record that on September 8th, 2018, 1930 hours, a blood sample was taken from the body of Rory Street and sent for a toxicology screening. The results of that screening showed that Rory Street tested positive for 60 nanograms per milliliter of cocaine. Ms. Giuseppe, can we now, uh, actually, Your Honor, permission to display Exhibit 18? That is Spencer London's expert testimony, and it's already in evidence. It's been admitted. Directing your attention to page two, where Dr. London or Spencer London says, here is the opinion that I've reached in this case. Based on a reasonable degree of professional and or medical certainty, Rory Street's death was caused, at least in part, by the use of cocaine. Turning to page three in this document, it is true that the amount of cocaine found in Rory Street's system was nominal, only 60 nanograms per milliliter. However, Rory Street's blood was drawn long after her death, and potentially even longer after Rory actually ingested the cocaine. Therefore, this test may not represent the actual amount of cocaine that was in Rory Street's blood at the time of the incident or earlier in the day. And it is possible that the amount of cocaine in the system was actually much higher throughout the course of that day leading up to practice. And with that, Your Honor, defense rests and we're ready to move on to closing arguments. All right, is the uh, plaintiff, uh, plaintiff rest and close? Your Honor, before moving on to, to closing arguments, I want to ask the court for a quick time check. You have uh, 11 minutes and 46 seconds. And Your Honor, Your further, Honor. Per, per the local rules of this competition, all conferring with opposing counsel can be done electronically. Could we have just a two minute recess to, so I can confer with opposing counsel to set up for closing argument? to take a quick restroom break. Uh, 
Yeah, but two minutes is two minutes, okay? No more. Stop. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And, and Your Honor, if I could get a quick time check as well. You've got 16 minutes and 39 seconds. Thank you. Perfect. All right, counsel. I'm fine. Are you to proceed to closing arguments? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you for that. And uh, with that being said, the uh, plaintiff may proceed. May it please the court. Go take your sorry butt to Burma Road. You're useless on the field, so we might as well run you till you pass out. Damn it, Street, you don't practice work the crap, and now you're lollygagging over there. I guess you think you're special. Come over here, and I'll show you how not special you are. After putting Rory Street in the middle of that field, Coach Taylor, the defendant, lined up all of her teammates single file. Coach Taylor, the defendant, then blew the whistle, sent her teammates on her like a sick dog, attacked her into the ground. And the first time that happened, the defendant ran over there, picked Rory up by the jersey, yanked her up, and said, do it again. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Fifteen times the defendant blew the whistle. Fifteen times Rory dribbled. And fifteen times Rory was knocked to the ground. Do it again, do it again, do it again. Our power is neither good nor evil. It's what a person decides to do with that power that is important. And this defendant chose to abuse her power as a youth sports coach, as Rory's coach. Chose to abuse that power to the point where Rory died. And Your Honor, because of that, we have filed this lawsuit against the defendant. And we had the burden in this case, and we have met that burden. We had to show that the defendant failed to exercise ordinary care, and that the defendant's conduct was the proximate cause of Rory Street's death. And I want to show you why the defendant failed to exercise ordinary care. Andrew, can you pull that slide up for us? Let's talk about why the defendant failed to exercise ordinary care. You see on the screen, it was 105 degrees that day. But it wasn't just a coincidence that it was 105 degrees and they just happened to be practicing. The defendant chose to practice at the hottest point in that day, chose to practice in 105 degree heat. Why? <clears throat> to toughen her girls up. Now, what would have been exercising ordinary care is waiting until later in the afternoon when it cooled off when the games are actually played to keep the players safe, to keep them hydrated, to keep this from happening. And while they were practicing in 105 degree heat, they, it wasn't just a short practice where they did it for 30 minutes and went on home. They practiced for two to three hours in that 105 degree heat. And over the course of those two, three hours, we didn't hear any testimony about breaks. Aubrey Saracen only testified that, you know, they might get one break in the middle of a practice. This went on for three hours. A three-hour practice in 105-degree heat is unreasonable without any breaks, without any hydration, without any shade. But the unreasonableness doesn't just stop at practicing in the 105-degree heat. It doesn't just stop at practicing for more than two hours. It doesn't just stop at not giving them breaks. It goes on to Burma Road. Now, the defense tried to make the point that Burma Road is something that's been done for over 30 years. It's tradition at Waco High. Your Honor, the past is not perfect. And if we followed everything we did from the past, we'd be in trouble. It's like saying, well, I, back in my day, I used to play football with no helmets. That doesn't mean it's okay now. That's like manufacturers saying, well, we used to manufacture pajamas that were flammable. That doesn't mean it's okay now. That's like people saying they're driving down the interstate riding in the bed of a tailgate, saying, oh, that's how we used to live. Well, that's not how we live now. 
Exercising ordinary care does not rely on the standard of the past. It relies on the standard of now. So let's talk about slide tackles because that's something that's brand new. Slide tackles have never been utilized at Waco High as a form of punishment. But you learned today, the defendant wanted to teach Rory a lesson, said it was for her own good. You think you're special? I'll show you how special you are. The defendant chose to concoct and debut this brand new punishment for the first time. Sending player by player, teammate by teammate on Rory. Forcing Rory's teammates to sack her into the ground, forcing Rory's teammates to weaken her more and more after they could see that she was hurting. I don't know what kind of sadistic practices the defendant subscribes to, but that's not ordinary care in today's world. And the next thing we had to prove was proximate cause, which leads us right into it. Proximate cause is when the result would not have happened but for that conduct. You're not, not for practicing in 105 degree heat, not for not providing water, if not for giving some shade, if not for continually punishing Rory at Burma Road, which within itself is enough for anyone. In the morning, would have been reasonable maybe for Burma Road. Late at night, maybe would have been reasonable for Burma Road. But in the middle of the heat of the day, in 105 degrees, Burma Road was not reasonable. Subjecting Rory to 105 degree heat, subjecting Rory to not having water, subjecting Rory to no breaks, then sending her to Burma, Burma Road, sending her a bear crawl for 60 yards, sprint for 30 yards, and doing it over and over and over again. And then bringing her back to the field to get slide tackled 15 times by her teammates. Not for those three things, Your Honor. Rory Street does not die. Now, to support this theory, we published an expert report of Dr. McConaughey. Andrew, would you pull that up for us? Now, the defense talked about an alternative theory of cocaine being the reason that Rory died, but I want to show you why that's not true. Andrew, will you pull up the factors of heat stroke for me, please, sir? The symptoms of heat strokes, the, the key ones I want to talk about. Weakness, dizziness, confusion, disorientation, fatigue, seizures. Now, Andrew, if you would do a side-by-side -side between these factors that have to do with heat exhaustion and the factors and symptoms associated with cocaine. Now, Andrew, would you highlight for me in the heat stroke section, weakness? Would you highlight for me dizziness? Would you highlight for me confusion and disorientation? Would you highlight for me fatigue? Will you highlight for me what we know absolutely happened before Rory died, seizures? Now, when we compare these two reports from Dr. McConaughey talking about heat stroke, from Mr. London, toxicologist talking about cocaine, you see that these symptoms with cocaine, they don't mention weakness, they don't mention dizziness, they don't mention confusion, disorientation, they don't mention fatigue, they don't mention seizures. None of those symptoms are listed under cocaine, none of them. And based on all the testimony we heard today, the symptoms listed under heat stroke are the symptoms most closely related to what Rory was suffering on September 7th, 2018. Andrew, we go to the next page of Mr. McConaughey's report where we talk about what Rory was experiencing. If you would highlight for me as I say them out loud. We heard statements 
such as Roar being sloppy, really struggling, unusually pale, feeling funny, breathing heavy, almost lifeless. And we know that when Rory collapsed after being sacked to the ground on that 15th time, Rory began convulsing and seizing. Again, symptoms of heat stroke. Now, we also had to prove foreseeability as opposing counsel mentioned. This isn't foreseeability that Rory would use cocaine. Andrew, you can go ahead and take that down for me. This is foreseeability that a heat stroke would occur. Now, Your Honor, foreseeability is would an ordinary person foresee that an event would occur like this? Would a reasonable high school soccer coach foresee that practicing in 105 degree heat, running your player at practice for an hour and 15 minutes, then sending them to Burma Road, then having all their teammates tackle him 15 times over and over and over again, would a reasonable coach foresee that that might give someone heat stroke? Yes, it, this is common sense logic foreseeability. There is no doubt that any soccer coach, any coach for that matter, practicing in 105 degree heat could foresee that practicing under these conditions without any relief, without checking on Rory, asking, are you all right? Without asking Rory if she needs to see the trainer, without asking Rory if she needs water, without asking Rory if she needed to take a break, that someone in Rory's shoes could have heat stroke. Aubrey Saracen told us that Rory was unusually pale, that she was struggling, that she was having chest pains. Your Honor, the symptoms were written all over the wall. The defendant just chose to ignore them. It's exactly what the defendant wanted to do. The defendant wanted to teach Rory Street a lesson. He thought it'd be for her own good. Time's up, counsel. Yeah, defense, you may proceed to closing. Yes, Your Honor. May it please the court, counsel. No one could have seen this coming. Not Coach Taylor, not Miss Aubrey Saracen, or anyone else you've heard from today. And that's because none of them knew that Rory ingested cocaine sometime before practice on September 7th. They had absolutely no way of knowing that the mixture of cocaine and physical exertion was putting dangerous levels of strain on Rory's heart. Now, as opposing counsel just told you, they had to prove that the harm Rory suffered on September 7th, well, that that was the foreseeable outcome of my client, Coach Taylor's actions. But because no one knew about the risk that Rory had put herself in, no one was able to stop it. By the time Coach Taylor and Rory's teammates knew something was wrong, it was already too late. And today, the plaintiff has brought a wrongful death suit against Coach Taylor. And therefore, they have the burden of proving their case. They had to prove that Miss Taylor acted negligently towards Rory Street back on September of 2018, and that those negligent actions caused Rory Street's death. And that means that they needed to prove that Rory's death was a foreseeable result of Coach Taylor's actions. And if they can't prove that, then under the law, Ms. Taylor cannot be held alive. There are two key facts that jump out from the testimony today that demonstrate why the plaintiff failed to meet their burden. First, because September 7th was a normal soccer practice. And second, because Coach Taylor had no way of knowing that Rory was feeling poorly during practice. I want to walk through those facts one at a time. Now, fact number one, September 7th was a normal practice for the Waco High School's varsity soccer team. They practiced in the afternoon at about the same time they always practiced. 
The whole team was there, along with the coach, along with the trainer. And it was the trainer's job to keep an eye on the students, make sure they stayed safe and fit. Miss Taylor decided that that day they would scrimmage. But then as you heard, something happened. Something happened. Something that happens at soccer practices all over the world. Someone was goofing off. You heard from Miss Taylor that normally Rory Street was a great player. But on September 7th, she was distracted, goofing off, not playing well at all. So Miss Taylor asked Rory to go run some sprints. At Waco, they call it running Burma Road, even though they aren't in Burma and there's absolutely no road involved. But that was the tradition. You goof off at Waco, you run sprints. When Miss Taylor saw Rory goofing off, well, she told her to go run sprints. What she'd done to students on her soccer team for years. But then you heard that while Rory was doing those sprints, it didn't seem like she was taking it seriously. You heard that Rory was goofing off. Coach Taylor could see it. And it was clear to Miss Taylor that sprints, they weren't handling the situation. So she decided to mix things up. Instead of the normal punishment sprints, she improvised, made up a drill that, that practiced a specific skill and also would encourage that team discipline. So she asked Rory and the rest of the team to participate in the slide tackle drill just a few minutes later. And specifically, she asked Rory to dribble a ball and then to go 1v1 against each of her teammates in turn. And each of her teammates would start opposite Rory, start moving towards her, and then attempt to steal the ball away from her using a slide tackle. You heard that during this exercise, Rory, she seemed to be struggling a little bit. But that was the point. The point of physical exertion at practice is not because it's easy, it's because it challenges students. It makes them better. Overcoming that challenge, that's the whole point of going to practice. And even though she was struggling, Rory collapsed at the end of that drill. Everyone was stunned. Miss Taylor couldn't believe it, and neither could Rory's teammates. Because up to that point, it was just a normal practice. No one had any clue Roy was in trouble until after it was too late to help. Now, I want to address two allegations that came up today during this trial. One of those allegations came from Aubrey Saracen, and the other came from opposing counsel. The first, Aubrey told us that Coach Taylor well, he told Rory, she told Rory to run until she passed out. But when Miss Taylor was on the stand, she told you that never happened. And then for the first time in this whole trial, opposing counsel said during his closing argument that at some point during that second drill on September 7th, that the coach, Coach Taylor, walked over and grabbed Rory and forced her back up to on her, onto her feet when she couldn't stand. I don't know exactly where opposing counsel is getting that from. It wasn't in the testimony today, but it's an allegation without basis. And both of those assertions are. And Your Honor, it's your job when looking at the testimony today, not just to listen to what people say, but also to judge credibility. And one part of determining credibility is looking at whether witnesses' statements are consistent and what biases they might have. Now, the day after Rory passed away, Aubrey was texting her friend about what happened at practice. Now, in these text messages, she describes that what she saw was sudden, out of nowhere. And she doesn't even mention Coach Taylor once. She certainly isn't blaming Coach Taylor the way that she was on the stand today. 
She certainly doesn't say that Coach Taylor had anything to do with her friend's death in these messages. Specifically, she said when she witnessed the event, she didn't even believe it had happened. You can take that down now, Misty Giuseppe. The very first time Aubrey said anything about how Coach Taylor told Rory to run until she passed out, well, that wasn't until she was deposed in this case. When her best friend's mom brought this lawsuit and she knew, she knew that Rory's mom was counting on her. With those inconsistencies and that clear bias, wouldn't you want to hear from someone who could confirm what Aubrey said was actually what happened? But the plaintiff, they didn't bring you anybody to confirm her story. The only other witness who was present that day, other than my client, was Jess Merriweather. And Miss Merriweather didn't say anything about hearing the coach say, run until you pass out. And we certainly didn't hear from Miss Merriweather that, the, that Coach Taylor ever laid her hands on Rory or forced her to continue a drill after she had collapsed. That's just not what happened. Fact number two, Miss Taylor had no idea Rory was feeling poorly during practice. Now I introduced portions of Miss Merriweather's deposition where she talks about how soccer practices were run, were run at Waco High. Students are allowed to take breaks to get water. They just gotta ask. They can go and talk to the trainer, Miss Merriweather, whenever they want about any problems they have. All they gotta do is walk up and start talking. That's the whole reason why the trainer's there, to help the students. And, and when I asked Miss Saracen about that, she said, yes, we know that. That's why she's there. But when Miss Saracen was testifying, she seemed to be the only one who had any clue that anything was wrong with Rory. Because Rory told her. We heard that when Miss Saracen and Rory were alone together, Rory said that she had a pain in her chest. She was feeling funny. And on the stand today, Miss Saracen, she said, I was very concerned. I was worried. But then went on to tell you that she never conveyed those worries or communicated those concerns in any way to anyone who could have helped Rory. She was so concerned that she didn't say a thing. Your Honor, Rory never told Miss Taylor about the pain in her chest, never asked Miss Merriweather for help or advice, never asked for a break. Rory and Miss Saracen kept those concerns and the warning signs to themselves and kept Miss Taylor and the rest of the team in the dark. These two facts show how sudden and unexpected Rory's death was. For Miss Taylor and for the rest of the varsity soccer team of Waco High, the practice on September 7th was normal. Everything was fine. Up until the moment, the moment Rory collapsed. No one saw this coming. It just wasn't foreseeable. Because the plaintiff has failed to prove that Rory's death was a foreseeable outcome of Miss Taylor's actions, they failed to meet their burden today. Now we also chose to pursue the affirmative defense that I told you about earlier. And I wanna be clear about something. We don't know why Rory chose to ingest cocaine sometime before practice on September 7th. She was 18 years old and 18 year olds sometimes make mistakes. I do not believe, and no one here is suggesting that because Rory did what 18 year olds do and made a mistake, used cocaine, and that she deserved to die. Rory did not deserve what happened to her. And we all wish that Rory was with us today. But the evidence shows that it was the cocaine use that caused her death. And our expert toxicologist shared that opinion with you. Good coaches challenge their athletes and push them to be better, faster, stronger. And at times they teach them lessons, but it's a two-way street. Good athletes have to show up ready to practice 
ready to face that challenge. Your Honor, I wanna leave you with one final thought. I think we can all agree that Rory Street's death was a tragedy. There's no other word for it. She was only 18 years old and she left behind a loving family and countless friends. It's understandable that her mom and her friends, that they would want answers. But the answer is that no one could have seen this coming. Miss Reese Taylor, she couldn't have seen this coming. And we know that's an unsatisfying answer for a lot of people involved in this case, but it's the truth. That's why we're gonna ask you to find, and, and I ask you to find Miss Taylor not liable. Thank you.